In this video, we'll cover some common mistakes that people make when using their PCs, so you can make sure you're not making them too. So with that, let's begin. Never deciding to head into the settings. I see loads of people with the taskbar filled with useless weather icons or the Windows search bar. Their wallpaper is just a standard Windows background and their desktop is meme quality. Let's put it this way. Would you work in a cluttered desk that has never been cleaned? I assume no. Then why subject yourself to messy desktops? Seriously, take some time to tailor your work environment both in the software and physical desk. Also, Windows has a whole array of customization that you can do in order to improve your working experience, from custom mouse cursors, making your setup more minimal and clean, all the way to modifications like making your PC even look like a Mac. By the way, if you want me to do a video covering some of these or anything related, drop a comment below. A key part of using a computer involves interacting with those plastic pieces, the keyboard. Mistakes people make when typing are looking only at the keyboard as a type rather than their screen, only using a couple of fingers when typing, and thirdly, just their overall typing speed in general and not trying to improve it either. All three of these things can be quite annoying and hard to fix and improve upon at first but I guarantee you that these changes will massively compound in your overall efficiency in using all aspects of your computer. For example, let's say you type theoretically maybe 50 words a minute and are always looking at your keyboard. Meanwhile we have another person let's say who types at maybe 100 words a minute and looks at their monitor while they type. Though their speed is doubled, the second person could actually probably type the same text in three times the speed as they aren't constantly looking looking up and down between their keyboard and monitor and pausing in between. So yeah, you should definitely invest in improving your typing abilities if you can. Monkey Type is a very good website for this. Next is storing and backing up your stuff. You should either store your stuff in the cloud as a backup to your original copy or on a physical external hard drive. Preferably both, but two physical storage drives as backups with the same information on both should be good. One rule that I generally follow when storing important documents and files is that if there's only one location where the data is stored, such as on your PC, then quite frankly, it doesn't exist. As your PC could literally start combusting right now and you'd probably be in a bit of a pickle, especially if your crypto account password was on there. If your data is in two locations, I guess it now exists, and if it's in three, then that's great. Trust me, I know from experience. Talking about storing stuff, let's talk about file management. There's a whole rabbit hole we could probably dive into here, but I'll cover this on a high level. First of all, storing your files in a somewhat manageable and sensible folder structure will just generally make your life easier. I try to stick to one main folder and then organize from within there. Yeah, I don't use the built-in Windows folders personally. Similarly, with naming files, I think the key here is just to be reasonable so you can find what you need again easily. And no, just cluttering your desktop does not count as finding it easily. Lastly, for storing files, I think we need to touch upon the downloads folder. Be sure to go in there from time to time to clear it out or preferably move the files as they are downloaded into the folders that they need to be in if you decide to keep them that is. Don't be that guy with a larger list of downloaded files dating back years ago with a good sprinkling of exe files that you used once and never touched again. Next, we have past passwords and security. Don't just use a single password for stuff and change a few characters at the start or end for example. I think we're all guilty of this. Ideally, try to make each one different. Consider getting a password manager that can help you keep your passwords safe, organized and backed up. Also, don't write passwords down on pieces of paper as this just ends up creating more clutter and can easily be outdated. I'm sure we all know someone who has post-it notes attached to their computer monitor or laptop with a bunch of passwords on there. Don't be that guy. Now let's hop into the browser. In here, there's a few things worth mentioning. First, is having countless tabs open that you can't even see the icon anymore. Do you really need to have this many tabs open all at once? Put one minute aside throughout the day just to clear things up. You can also use tab groups if you like to keep things organized. Also, for closing tabs, use Ctrl W and for navigating around tabs, use Ctrl Tab or Ctrl Shift Tab. Don't go hunting around for that X icon to close the tab. You can also use the middle mouse button to close tabs. Another aspect of the browser is browser bookmarks. Organize these into folders, preferably only one level deep at maximum as opposed to keeping bookmarks from years ago as part of a personal collection. Also, chances are you're probably using Chrome. If so, click the pop-out banner on screen right now and you'll find a video I did on Chrome tips and tricks not too long ago if that interests you. Anyway, on with the video. And that takes us on to the mouse or trackpad if you're on a laptop. First is sensitivity. Now I'll just say that adjusting this is a bit more of a niche thing really as most are okay at the box but if this is a personal setup and you really want to increase your efficiency then try playing around with this setting. Also, you can press down on the middle mouse button to perform actions such as closing tabs as mentioned previously, scrolling or panning depending on your application. Laptop users can 
tap with two fingers to right click and three finger tap to middle mouse click. Great for opening new tabs in your browser. Following on from that is poor multitasking. I know it can be easy to do if you're super busy throughout the day, but try to organize the tasks that you're working on. Don't be that guy with 10 Word documents where you can't even see the preview anymore and just spends 10 seconds jumping between the documents every time. Try using multiple desktops instead to keep sets of work together and organize. With this being Windows, organize your applications by splitting your screen in half thirds or even quarters. Windows 11 does have some good features regarding this, but the same thing applies to Windows 10 and other operating systems for that matter. You get the idea. <coughs> Following on from this, the next mistake people make is not using search enough. Now, I know Windows search can be pretty bad, but if you're still launching apps or opening file locations instead of just searching for them, then you're really wasting a lot of time. I mean, if Windows search isn't good enough for you, there are quite a few different search tools and applications that can add functionality or even straight up replace the Windows search. But yeah, I think this might be a bit too niche for this video. Okay, so I just want to finish the video with some quick fire random mistakes for those of you who stayed to the end. I guess clicking off this video could be considered a mistake as well. Anyway, Moving on, pop-ups. If you get pop-ups, don't just press the OK button and dismiss it. Read it and choose the appropriate option so you know what you have done and how to prevent it coming back again and again to haunt you. Updating Windows. From time to time, it might not be a bad idea to head into the Windows Update section of your PC and searching for updates, especially if you think there's something wrong with your PC or if something's just acting a bit off. This might help to fix the issue as well as fix any bugs that you might be facing. Night Shift. This might seem trivial, but if you're working late at night, enable Night Shift or at least schedule it to Reduce the blue light that your screen displays before you go to sleep. Trust me, burning 3am oil and trying to go to sleep with all that blue light is not the best and your brain will definitely thank you. You can always adjust the intensity of this setting to your preference too. Next is ergonomics. Make sure your desk and all ergonomic stuff you hear about all the time is actually half decent, otherwise you're just going to be less productive and spending more time getting up and grabbing your back. Finally, we have startup tasks. If your PC feels kind of slow, head into the task manager or even the settings menu in Windows to adjust what processes occur. When starting your PC. But those are just mistakes using Windows. If you want to see mistakes people make on Microsoft Word and how to actually use it, then I'd highly recommend checking this video out. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.